perfect. course of the year don't know if you can hear this because the wind is howling but uh, yeah we've made it 20 courses this year and uh, Royal Fremantle is where we're playing today I've just played the first hole I parred it which is great and uh, just a, an okay drive down this par 5 don't know how much chat but lots of the shots today and uh, hope you enjoy it okay so you join me on the first hole of Royal Fremantle Golf Club the first Royal course that I've ever played First hole is called Oliphant's Drive. It's a 386 metre par four. Goes downhill and then back uphill to the green. Uh, just don't put it on the driving range was my only swing thought, which is off to the right hand side. So as you might expect when you have that kind of thought, yeah, I really, really overcompensated and ended up down in the left hand rough, but that really wasn't the worst place to be. Um, and to be honest, uh, as the uh, information on my website says, par's a good score here, so I'm not out of the hole at this point. Uh, this is one of the other guys who was in our group for the Future Golf Day. This is Darren, and uh, I left this one in there because uh, he hit a pretty good one, pretty much as he should. Just a nice draw down the middle of the fairway. Managed to get myself up to the front of the green and then pitched on. This is Darren's putt coming from out of nowhere to make par, which was a great effort on his part. Um, now got John over his putt. I think this might have been for par as well. That one slipped by. This is Mike Tutor or Chutes. He made four as well well done to him and so it was all down to me basically but i was able to uh, to drop this one in and a pretty good start um i'm you know that was a, a, a hole that i got a shot on so i was quite happy with that and uh yeah, we're on to the second hole at level part good start i didn't actually film down the second um however this was on to the third now if the green looks small it's because it is very small. This was a 88 metre par three and the green was tiny. Um, this is actually my third shot um, because I came up a little bit short and then honestly I was just happy to get it somewhere on the putting surface uh, because I was short sided and I was unlucky to be honest. Uh, that one lipped out which uh, there were a few of those throughout today. So. You know, it is what it is, and uh, we move on. But uh, at this point, I'd actually wiped the par five beforehand, so I was a little bit frustrated. On to the seventh hole. Um, there were a couple of really, really good holes in between these, but I just didn't film them. Um, one of them, par five, which just had this really narrow shoot and uh, uh, off the tee, and then uh, Mike actually had a putt for eagle on that one. I'm not exactly over the moon with that shot. I caught the trees on the left. I did go on to make six on this hole after a, a devilish uh, putt from the back of the green. So onto the eighth hole. This was a par three. It was probably about 170 meters, something like that. Um, hitting a five iron and uh, I hit it pretty well. And uh, although uh, John's just stepped across in front of that there and now I've got Mike's bum. Uh, I actually hit the back of the, or the, just the, the top lip of the bunker and rolled back into it. So it was a little unfortunate. Mike on the tee, and uh, I think he said he had a six iron on this one. And uh, he's obviously been working out because uh, this one actually went long. So I'm in the bunker. It's a pretty good lie. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm fairly well back in it, and I'm just thinking about getting it releasing just off the top of that and you can see I'm just trying to focus on getting that downward strike and 
if I'm honest, got way too cute on it and uh, left it down by my feet again, which is less than ideal. So John was down in the bunker as well. And uh, you can see from my face there, pretty annoyed with, uh, with what I've done there. John does the right thing, make sure I get it out. The first rule of bunkers is to get out of the bunker. I've broken that and he's now giving himself a shot at par. Whereas I've really now got to uh, pull something out of the bag to, um, to get this up and close which I do get it out and it just carried on rolling out so the rule is folks get out of the bunker and nothing else and uh, I didn't follow that but uh, there's me taking care of the course so Mike uh, who had played up uh, from over the back of the green this was his par putt The greens themselves were really, really good. You can see the way this picks up pace. They were, um, they were very quick. Nice putt, Mike. Um, no, actually not very quick, but they were just smooth, consistent, um, and uh, you had to really pick a line and then uh, oh. and and just right. kind of tap it along it. So John narrowly missed out on his par, and that meant that uh, I was now going for a bogey, and that's an awful putt. There's not any way to sugarcoat that it's uh, pretty bad so that ended up being another double and it was two doubles in a row so not in a great spot at this point uh, a little bit behind where I needed to be so ninth hole uh, this one was about uh, 380 meters I think um, and uh, I'm hitting driver it honestly was a little bit tighter than, uh, than what I thought I'd hit a very good drive um, it rolled out to about 275, 280, and then I put my approach shot up to here, and I'm thinking, right, okay, nestle it close, you know, it might sneak in, and you maybe salvage something out of this front nine. So take a look at those uh, initial putting strokes, the practice strokes versus what I actually ended up doing, and you'll see they were nowhere near, and that almost only got halfway. Same again, putting strokes nice and confident, nice and full. And uh, then uh, this little weird baby stroke comes out. So if I'm gonna take a practice stroke, it needs to mimic what I'm actually doing. So I end up, oh, I have a putt of bogey for that one. This was Mike for par, I'm pretty sure. And he rattled that one in. And Darren, can't honestly recall what he was going for here and he made that one too so they're definitely holdable on this green so I had this now for a, a rather nervy three putt and uh, made it it was a bogey and I turned in 14 points um, so those that don't understand Stableford that basically means I was four points below my handicap in terms of what like worse than um, this was uh, just like the putting green area and uh, uh, near the first tee and you can really see how that people congregate around the area so when you're on, on the first tee it really does become a little nervy I didn't film the 10th I made double again this is the 11th Mike ripping one down the middle of this and uh, Darren also hitting a good shot in fact, I think we all hit good tee shots down this one. I just wasn't able to capture John's one. So this is me hitting driver, as I said. And this is a par five, I believe, this one. And uh, yeah, it was in a pretty good spot when I got down there. Ended up making a five on that one with a rather streaky one putt. Up ahead, hole 12, this is par 3. This is actually a par putt because I've missed the green. And again, just didn't get it anywhere near it. I was short a lot throughout the day and um, something that I really need to work on, just making sure I get the ball to the hole and give it at least a chance. This was Mike for par, I believe. And there's me just finishing off that bogey. So at this point I'm still I'm still well behind. If I ever hit it. Oh there we go. Alright. Done. 
so on to hole 13 um, you're not going to be able to see any of the shots of this but I just took a different uh, different view um, you'll be able to see the trees in the background blowing around all over the place it was really really windy and uh, and that's why I'm doing really as a voiceover more than anything else because um, most of the stuff that I captured on the day has uh, got a lot of effect of wind noise even with the uh, dead cat on the mic there's me saying I don't really know where that one's gone which happened a lot Mike this was probably the first drive that he'd hit poorly all day he really did hit the ball well off the tee up until that point and then struggled a little bit and um, Darren also hit the ball pretty well off the tee and uh, this is my second shot. It did manage to get on the fairway, and uh, we're just slow mowing. Just some of the changes I'm trying to make. So I'm trying to get no more than like a 90 degree angle in my right arm there, and stop it disappearing back behind me, which I'm kind of doing a decent job of, but it is still a work in progress. So second shot on this par four ended up putting me green side in the bunker, which. Uh, after my last exploit in there, just get it out, which was actually a little bit unlucky that that grabbed up on that first bounce there and didn't release down. On to the 14th hole, I think. No, that says 16, David. Read the marker. Hit a, hit a three wood down this one. I was, uh, no, it does say 14. Don't doubt yourself. So it was horrible. It was a really, really rubbish shot. I sliced across it. I had wind blowing hard off of the left, and this is where it left me. There was actually a bee's nest in that tree as well. So I, uh, I kind of ran out of there pretty damn quick. But it's worked. Okay then, folks. I'm on the 15th hole. I'm not playing great, but I'm enjoying it. And I uh, hope you can still hear me. John it is shot. Two drives in the bag John. One a bit off the fairway. There's confidence for you. Uh, yeah so the 20th course of this year. Nearly done. It's been a long road. It's took me two different continents. Sorry I was incontinent there for a second. It's weird. Might, might get rid of this bit. I hope you've been enjoying it along the way as well. I mean I I did it because I thought you guys would enjoy it as well, but also to take me some amazing courses. And uh, really, really enjoying this one too. First royal course I've ever played. Okay, into the last few holes now. So 17, this was a glorious little par three. And um, in fact, I think it's pretty much chatting this so maybe I'll just let this one play through and um, do stick around to the end because uh, I've got a little bit of a few thank yous to different people and uh, yeah that'll be coming up just towards the end of the video just up on the left no one looks to have hit this green either idiot famous last words Missing left. Are you sure 168? No, I'm not. 155. I had 155 meters. Yeah. Four blokes is that here. No one trusts it. Yep, 155. trusts. <laughs> <laughs> I did hit the green, I think, but it just uh, rolled off. That's where my last ball ended up. <laughs> Come on, Dave. Right, so is that, is that the know. marker off to the left there? Yeah. Oh. Well, it's not on, is it? Well, Come on, done. Sorry, mate, can I get you to move? It. Yep. Just, yeah. Just in case it goes in. Oh, you got there. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's all right. Go. 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 Oh, shot. Oh, I'm glad.
glad I moved. <laughs> oh, that would have been a lot cooler if I didn't drop the glasses. Right, best shot of the day. So I was actually a little bit surprised at um, how far that was away. It looked a lot, lot closer when I was uh, on the tee box, but it was one of those where it was almost dead on line, but just a little bit long. So there's a huge slope, and you see Darren's putt coming down this one, and Mike's that had just gone before that, where this really took off. So I knew it was going hard from left to right, but it was also downhill, so it's an awkward putt. Um, you know, one of those ones that slides away from you, and so you've really got to pick a good line and um, and then hit the right pace, which I know you can say about any putt, but when you've got one like this, um, which is also then we need into, just to add a little bit of um, more complexity to it, so I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm adding about for a good six foot of break on this. And um, while I think the line was probably about right, the pace was nowhere near, and you just see that get taken down there, and it actually didn't even reach the hole, so, quite a, um, a disappointing putt really um, the advantage was there were a few of us or in fact all of us that were down here below the hole so I did get a very good look at it um, and uh, you would have thought after seeing all that you'd be in a pretty good spot but uh, then this happened Unbelievable scenes. But it's golf, it happens, and uh, yeah, it wasn't to be. Uh, but you gotta love it when you uh, you get the nearest to pin, but you uh, three putt. Mike to tidy up for uh, for a bogey, I think, because he was over to the left of the green in the first place. Um, uh, we were all quite happy with that. Final hole then. John had, uh, had just moved a little bit left to right on that. Shot traces didn't work on all of these. Um, yeah, he's just giving me the shits at the moment, to be honest, shot tracer. So it's on some of these, but not on others. Um, it was a really good day. Really enjoyed it. Mike uh, Mike was a, a pleasure to play with, as was Darren and John. And uh, it was a good thing about these future golf events. Mike absolutely ripped this one. Look, the tee's gone 30 metres. He's chased in after it down there. So, last drive of the day. We're not holding back at all. Absolutely moosed, that one. Uh, ended up down the right-hand side, so you'll hear me say in a minute. Mike got away with it. Should be all right. Yeah, in short, it wasn't. Um, and I had to hack out to over here. And, uh, and so here it is, uh, this will be the last shot that you're going to see. There's only one club that gets there. So I'm, I'm going to finish the video there. If you did enjoy it, hold on, I'll get a better backdrop. We'll walk down the hole. So if you did enjoy the video, smash that like, leave me a comment and subscribe if you enjoyed it too. 20 courses, 20 new courses in 2020, done.
bit of poo came out. <laughs> Oh shit! Oh, oh wow! Oh, that, yeah. Check out that. Ooh. Well, life just life just flashed before my eyes, but. Perfect. Perfect.